In this episode, we'll look at an old companion, Pro Tools. Pro Tools is the granddaddy of DAWs. People have been using it for years and because of Avid's business model, they've invested heavily in it, both in money and experience. So they're slow to move away from Pro Tools, though there are superior products out there. So what does Pro Tools do? Well, just like other DAWs, it can edit and mix and comes with some plugins and that's pretty much it. There are other licensed third-party producers of plugins and other functions such as ADR packages or over-the-line recording, but they are expensive. It does support plugins in its own format AAX, and the plugins that come with it are fine, though there is room for other companies to make a living by selling plugins in that format. Pro Tools works with other third-party audio products, but latency is a real issue. For it to work to its optimum, you will need Avid hardware. And before you ask, Yes, it's expensive. Depending on your workflow, be it music or post, there are two types of Pro Tools. The basic Pro Tools and the more expensive Pro Tools HD. There are a few things that you get with your HD version that you don't get in your basic version, like multiple video tracks, surround editing and mixing, and more audio tracks to play with. It imports AAFs and OMFs, which is nice, so bringing in a timeline from an Avid or any other video package that supports AAFs should be a piece of cake. Just remember when exporting your AAF to leave generous handles. This is a hidden bit at the front end of the sound clip, preferably about five seconds. This allows the sound editor to extend the front or end of the file so we can see or find any audio or ambience that he could use in the editing of the timeline. When on location recording, if the director was advised to leave a gap of silence or air before the interview proceeds, or whatever the action is, this gap of air would then be in the handles that the editor gives to the sound editor, making his life truly a wonderful place to be. He can use that air for splicing into the dialogue editor, sampling the relevant air for file cleanup. So we've looked at Pro Tools. I've worked with it for 20 years now and I still wonder why. I think there's an accompanying fear of change being a Pro Tools user. Ultimately, change is good. Though a challenge, new horizons are always so much more exciting. Imagine a whole new sunrise.